Thank you very much. I just wondered. You know where it was going, it's especially great. <laughs> I, I'm the worst at coming out with terrible mis- mix up sentences, so do forgive me when I get tongue tied. But today is great because you've not got to listen to me preach and get tongue tied too much. Because it's our song to praise service. So a huge thank you to everyone who has um, chosen hymns and sent them in. The bad news is I had over 35 sent in. So, we're not singing them all. <laughs> we'll be pleased to know, I'll be here next week. Um, but what I have done is I've selected the top six, so the, sorry, the top seven, so those that had two nominations, and, and we're singing those today, and then as the weeks and the months go on, the others, I will make sure we get into the services, or use in our next Song of Grace service, which will always be on the fifth Sunday of a month. So we've got lots of selections. 
if you've got hymns that you want to select and um, think you'd love us to sing, do let me or um, one of the stewards know and we can make sure we get that into the, onto the list for the future. So any help with choosing hymns is always gratefully received. Um, because as the minister, you always go for the ones you quite like. Um, so it's nice to know which ones you like as well. So it's wonderful to come together. So let's come together to listen to God's voice, to listen to each other, to speak what is on our hearts, to be held and heard, to find our voices and to hear God's call. Let me do the control of our first hymn, which is one. I chose the hymn Lord of the Year, which is one of my favourites. <laughs> I googled it to see shorts or post the outset of the sea, and I found it was written by Timothy W. Smith in 1967. According to my googling, it was to celebrate the centenary of the Scripture Union. In 1967, I was 15. So you can work that out. <laughs> and I, was, I was immersed in activities with the Methodist Youth Club in my hometown of Fort Montaigne, a real NAYC product. And that's where I first met my friend Sandra, who's sitting over there, who is reading for us here today. <coughs> this thing is often used to commemorate the work of God in our lives, and that certainly rings true for me in my life. I chose the hymn for my wedding here, to my dear Dave. And I chose it for the celebration service of his life. I hope it will be sung at my funeral, but not for a while yet. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> Let's hope, not for a while. There are many sentiments expressed in the words of the hymn that mean a great deal to me, such as, Lord, for our world where men disown and doubt you, love us in strength and comfortless and pain. <coughs> of course, I love the words of the final verse, which have never failed to move me, often to tears, as I've struggled to move forward in my life and to move forward on my Christian journey. Past put behind us, for the future take us, Lord of our lives, to live for Christ alone. So, let's sing our first hymn, Lord for the Years.
Some words. This it first came about in 1990 to me. I heard the song and the words just said everything to me, and I can now become a Christian. It's not played a lot. The words say it all as like, you begin your life as a Christian to me. In my life death, life is strong as death has won me. As you know, it's by Colonel Kennedy. But there's two reasons why I picked this song, and I'm praying about it. Whether it's right or not, I don't know. The first was because of me. But the second is, we've all had a hard life the last two years, what's gone on in everything with people. And this song, these words, seem to say a lot about what's happened. Mm. and what we come through. And let's hope we can carry on as we are. Thank you. So let's stand and sing with my whole heart. It's up to you to lead us then, Flynn.
thing that's got us going with a smile. It's just a, a fabulous um, song and a very typical of Graham Kendrick's style. So wonderful. Thank you, Matt, for sharing that with us. So let's come together in prayer. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that uh, music and singing makes us smile. We thank you that we're able to smile today as we sing hymns we know and some that we don't know so well. That we're able to praise you in this wonderful way through our voices. We thank you, Lord, that whether we think we can sing or not, we can raise our voices to you, Lord, and you hear us. You hear us in tune, you hear us in love, and you celebrate as we sing. We come to your house today, Lord, for comfort and certainty. We want to hear words of reassurance and sing songs that make us glad. But you are the God that calls us outside our comfort zones. And sometimes we feel unsettled by your word to us. Help us to be open to you this day, Lord. Help us to dare. Help us to dream. And help us to see where you are leading. And we thank you that you don't leave us content. That you don't allow us to wallow in self-satisfaction, thinking that we're in control. Instead, you unsettle us with your truth and disturb us into new ways of thinking. Thank you, Lord, for continuing to challenge us. And may we prove worthy as your servants here on earth. <coughs> Yet there are times when we're aware and we feel that our response is so little, so small. We feel cocooned in our bubbles of life. So help us, Lord, to realise the beauty of this world around us, even as we're here in this sanctuary. You remind us through the singing of birds, the warmth of the sun, that you are beauty itself, and you love this world you have created. So when we get it wrong, we pray that you would forgive us. And you would love us more. And so we pray together the words that you've taught us as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. So we're going to come to another hymn. This is a wonderful hymn written by Fred Pratt Green in 1977. Fred was a Methodist minister, and he was one of the best known contemporary school of hymn writers in the UK. And you may have guessed, it was chosen by Andrea and John. And I said to John, oh, you and Andrea chose the same hymn. And he said, well, we don't actually talk. <laughs> so it was a pure coincidence. And he said, Andrea will say something about it. <laughs> Much to your surprise. <laughs> so thank you, Andrea. God is here as we speak or meet to offer praise and prayer. What a great affirmation for Red Factory begins his hymn even though we can sometimes come to worship only partly present, perhaps we sometimes do a little bit absent, I know I do, that we can know that God is robustly here, and not only here, of course. What a lot he says in this hymn about our expectations of worship. Probably the thing that links us all in our great diversity um, is that um, we all come really wanting a sense of renewal, both personally and as a community. Mm. And we hope to find this in the symbols, especially the cross, which here has central praise, and the table in the words of prayers, songs. It will be different to different people. And in honesty of preaching, but also in silence. Just a little bit about silence. Flipping through the new issue of reform yesterday, I was interested to read some responses to the question, 
do we sing too much in church? <laughs> um, Anne Sardison, who's a modern songwriter, her first response was, definitely not. And of course, it's lovely to be able to sing out, even with our masks on, after all the time, times of lockdown. But then she modified her answer, wondering if sometimes we sing because we're afraid of silence. And yet, silence gives us space to listen for, to God and reflect on what he might be about. Whereas singing might limit us to thinking about God in particular ways. There is a special bond between the community united in silence. So plenty of song, but maybe occasionally some silence as well. On a slightly different tack, it's still relevant to the hymn, I can't believe that I'm now in my mid-70s and have been drawn to faith all my life. Uh, uh, and yet, even now, as much as ever, I continue with doubts and uncertainties, sometimes even more. But equally, I do know I can't live without God, and I'm especially aware of the lifelong need for grace, which we all have. So I can join wholeheartedly in saying with everybody here, I'm sure we all say the same, we who cannot live without you, we adore you, we believe. So let's stand and say God is here, here as we, his people. Thank you, Andrea. this thing off because I can't see. <laughs> Missed my glasses up.
Just before I do this reading, there's something I must say. When I moved to Aldershot three years ago, I missed my spiritual home and my spiritual family. Having been in church ever since I was five, <coughs> starting at the Sunday school in Weybridge, where I went through Sunday school and became a Sunday school teacher, before moving to Walton Methodist Church as a teenager, and once I'd married, I found we became active members within our church family. In 2012, I lost my husband and moved to Aldershot in 2018. Whilst looking on Facebook one day, I came across someone I hadn't seen for over 40 years. We got chatting and I found out she only lived a bus ride away. This person is of course Gladys. We were chatting away and she told me about this great church family that she belonged to. So I stayed the next weekend and came along to this great church. I have found my spiritual, spiritual home, so I would like to thank Liz, and I'm sure it was meant to be. The past six months have been very challenging for me. I lost my brother-in-law in October last year, and two weeks later, I lost my daughter. I just wanted to thank you all for your prayers and love, and for accepting me into your family. And also many thanks for your beautiful card and flowers sent last week for my fifth birthday. Thanks you, Mike. That's a pleasure. Welcome. The reading this morning comes from Corinthians 1, chapter 13, verses 1 to 13. And I find this is very apt. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a plain symbol. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It does not dishonour others. It is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes always preserves. Love never fails, but where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection, as in a mirror. Then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Oh, you're coming up. <laughs> okay, I was coming to you, Liz. Um, our next hymn is the, on, is the second of our Graham Kendrick hymns. Um, this one was first published in 1993, and amongst others, Liz was one of the people that chose it and said she'd love to say a few words. Thank you for inviting me. Often, as I watch the news and see and hear the tragic suffering around the world, I feel at a loss to find the words to pray. This hymn by Ray Kendry is my prayer. It reflects these situations. Children hungry, people without work, war, pollution, etc. But this is not a hymn of doom and gloom. The words are a prayer full of faith 
and hope, love and peace, forgiveness and inspiration. And when sung to the lovely music, a very emotional prayer. I hope you will be enriched and uplifted as I am by its message and <clears throat> will turn our spark into a flame. Thanks. Thanks. Let's stand and sing Beauty for Brokenness. Hope for the peace there. And I will remind you if standing is too difficult for all him, feel free to remain seated as well. Thank you. <laughs> Jesus said to them, Surely you will quote this proverb to me. 
physician, heal yourself. And you will tell me, do here in your hometown what we have heard that you did in Capernaum. <coughs> Truly I tell you, he continued, no prophet is accepted in his hometown. I assure you that there were many widows in Israel in Elijah's time, when the sky was shut for three and a half years and there was a severe famine throughout the land. Yet Elijah was not sent to any of them, but to a widow in Zarephath, in the region of Sidon. And there were many in Israel with leprosy in the time of Elisha, the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed, only Naaman the Syrian. All the people in the synagogue were furious when they heard this. They got up, drove him out of the town, and took him to the brow of the hill on which the town was built, in order to throw him off the cliff. But he walked right through the crowds and went on his way. Thanks be to God. Amen. And our next hymn is one translated by Robert Bridges from the German author Joachim Neander, and first published in 1899. Bridges was the poet laureate from 1913, having originally been a physician, and he was chosen by some. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, uh, as uh, Mike has said, um, the, the original um, author of the song was working in Neander, who, the day they found those remains of uh, ancient man, and he was sort of named after, um, he lived in that valley where those remains were found, hence Neanderthal land. Um, the song became uh, translated into English, as Mike has said, and uh, was sung a lot in public school, particularly in Charterhouse. Um, but the director of music at Charterhouse School sent um, Bridges' text to a friend of his, Herbert Howells, who I think is a prodigious for his um, other religious music as well. And he requested that Howells compose a new setting for the hymn for use at the school. Howells received the request by post one morning in the middle of breakfast, and almost immediately a tune suggested itself to him. And the hymn was apparently composed on the spot, and in the composer's words, while he was chewing bacon and sausage. Which is an unromantic thought, um, a song that I think has such profound words. Um, Howells' son, and Michael, had died in childhood the previous year, and uh, so in tribute to Howells, he rechristened the original German the tune, um, and he rechristened it Michael, and that's the one we sing it to now, and it obviously became uh, included in Methodist and other denominations, hymnalist, and became uh, a widespread hymn. Now, the history is an easy part. Trying to explain why certain words and music um, give a punch to your heart and mind every time you hear it. It's not easy. And the phrase that comes to mind uh, when trying to do that is, you know, they offer me roses and then ask me to boil them. In other words, trying to deconstruct beauty or an emotional response uh, runs the risk of destroying it, I think. Um, and anyway, it's also individual and personal. One person's piano can toes another person's chopsticks. I, I realise that, and I often <laughs> wonder, you know, when I think about this thing, why it has such an effect on me, and probably not others. However, listen. God unknown, he alone, calls my heart to be his own. But God's power, hour by hour, is my temple and my tower. Christ doth call one and all. Ye who follow shall not fall. These words and the music bring my emotions, faith, hope for the future and thanks for the past together in such a powerful way that it almost takes my breath away. And that simply is why it's my choice. Thank you, Mum. So let's stand and say that all my own of God is found.
sharing those wonderful words of scripture with us. There's so much in them that we could spend so much time reflecting on them and thinking about them. But I want to share with you a meditation from a wonderful author, and that's Baptist minister Nick Fawcett. And he writes some words of a meditation of a member of the Nazarene Synagogue, um, just to share with us. Go back a slide for us, Ethan, please. Thank you. Just to share with us. He writes, He had a wonderful voice, a real joy to listen to, so clear, so deep, so nicely spoken. I felt I could have sat there all day, letting the words wash over me. Good news for the poor, release for the captives, recovery of sight for the blind. Familiar, comfortable, and reassuring words. Or well, so I'd always thought. Only this time they didn't quite sound as reassuring as they used to. I don't know what it was, but somehow as he spoke, they came to life. Possessed of a power they had never held before. As if I were hearing them for the first time. Only the prophet was speaking, not to people long ago, but to me, here, now. And suddenly I didn't want to hear, didn't want to listen anymore, for the words were no longer what I thought they were, but unexpected discomforting, troubling words. They leapt at me and pinned me down. They lunged at me and pierced my very soul. They left me anxious, guilty and fearful, asking what they meant to someone like me, who was neither poor nor blind, but rich and free. I closed my ears, but he still spoke. And listening again, despite myself, I heard him say, a prophet without honour in his own country. That was the end. Too much. The voice no longer seemingly beautiful, but strident. No longer bringing joy, but rousing of rage. For I realised this man came not to soothe, but to challenge. Not to praise, but to question. Not only to us, but to others. I rose in rage, cursing him for his blasphemy, calling for his death. Yet somehow, through all of, though all around me did the same, he walked straight by, unharmed, untouched. Don't ask me how. I just don't know. But what I do know, deep down, much though I try to deny it, much though I try to ignore it, is that Jesus had been right to say. These words have been fulfilled today. As you listen to the passages today, as you listen to the word of the hymns today, I don't know what God has said to you in your hearts, or what inspiration he's given you. But hymns and words of scripture have the ability to challenge us, to disturb the comfortable. Hymns sometimes allow us to say things that we only dream of saying. As Liz said, sometimes when we can't find the words ourselves, the words of the hymns speak for us. And that has been a common theme in everything and everyone that's spoken today. And as Sue said, sometimes you just cannot describe why. And you can imagine that resonating with those who were hearing that day. They were in awe. And then the comfortable were disturbed. 
Jesus dared to speak. He dared to challenge. He was a prophet in his own time. And today, we have to listen carefully. We have to listen so carefully as to where Christ is taking us. How God is speaking to us. And we have to listen. And we have to be prepared to be disturbed, to be challenged, and to do things differently. One of the things that Jesus spoke of was the need to serve each other. The need to love one another. And our next hymn is one that speaks so profoundly of that. It's one that I have loved for many years, and one that Anne has said to me time and time again, would I share. And I'm going to come out to Anne with the microphone. I hope it's turned on. Or you coming this way? Oh, you coming this way. Okay, you better. Are you coming up? Okay. <laughs> um, a wonderful hymn. Oh, here we go. Yes, I will. There you go. No problem. Brother, sister, let me serve you. It was written. It's known as the servant song. And do you want to give some of the history of it, or do you want me to share? No, I want to say what it means to me. Go for it. This thing means a great deal to me. First of all, I do that. Sorry, can you give that? First of all, hints which mean most to me are hints which say something to me. And also, we have a tune which gives the word perfectly, and this does. I haven't been able to have a proper funeral for my husband in 2020. This thing would have been part of the service because that would have been a service of praise and thanksgiving for a life spent in dedicated service mm. over six years of ministry. But we were not able to do that. Other lines in that hymn mean great deal to me personally. The lines, I will hold the Christ life for you in the lifetime of your fear. For many years, many years, I was a slight and volunteer. And although it was unacceptable to express any faith or, or even political views in, in something, nevertheless, when I was listening to a troubled soul at two o'clock in the morning, those words came back to me. And although I never said them out loud, I did use them to try to help me to find words that would indeed speak peace to a deeply troubled soul. And the other bit that sounds to me, perhaps the most personal, there's a line which says, pray that I may have the grace, let you be my servant too. And that's the hardest one of all. When you fall to be the one doing the doing, it is not easy to have the grace to accept the service of other people. But so I try to be patient and have grace to accept it. Thanks, Sam. And this hymn was written by Richard Gilliard and first published in 1978. He was a self-taught guitarist and still lives in New Zealand with his family. So let's start and say, Brother, sister, let me say.
for prayer together. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we come to you who are everywhere around us and in us, in things secular as well as sacred. We come together today as a mixed bunch of humanity, all hoping for some spark to lift our spirits and give us motivation for the weeks and years ahead. Some of us have found inspiration in songs and hymns as we've heard today, and what a great variety there's been. And we give thanks for all those who have been inspired to compose them too. Other people may find their touch by pictures and film, books, by silence, by the example of others, the words of the Bible or by poetry. During the week before last at Alan Costello's funeral, we had a beautiful recitation by his actor son of a sonnet by Shakespeare on the nature of love. And I thought I'd begin these prayers with another poem about love by the modern poet priest Malcolm Guyte, based on a poem written four centuries ago by George Herbert, also about love. And if you like, you can substitute the word love with the word God. Love took George Herbert's hand and now takes mine, the same quick eyes, the same wry, welcome smile, the same spear-pierced and always healing heart. He turns to me and taking bread and wine, he spreads a table in the desert while I hesitate and draw back, stand apart, afraid as always, of committed love. But I have come too far to turn away. Though joy has vanished, she has led me here. So come, says love, there's nothing left to prove and nothing that you need to do or say. I am that perfect love that passed out here. Sit with George Herbert here, then taste and see and find that all your loves are found in me. So help us to come to accept God's unconditional love for each of us. But help us too to be less reticent about offering our own commitment. And in these intercessory prayers, show us how to play our part to help bring about the solutions where we can even if it means that we are sometimes made uncomfortable, as Mike suggested. So we pray for those still grieving loved ones lost during the pandemic, sometimes laid to rest with so little ceremony, so that it feels as if the work has not been finished properly. We pray for all those still suffering as a result of COVID, whether physically or mentally, perhaps unsure whether they can ever face the world again. We pray for all waiting, still waiting, for treatment or operations which should have happened months or years ago, who feel that the opportunity for life in all its fullness is passing them by. For all those on their own, who may sometimes wonder what is the point of life. For those stuck in difficult relationships where neither party seems able ever to affirm the other. For young people wondering what the future holds for them, may they find laughter and fun even in the seriousness of life. For our country and its leaders at this difficult time, especially for countries where everything seems unstable and war and famine never seem far away, though especially those on the Ukrainian-Russian border and those facing destruction in Tonga. Finally, let's pray for each other that we may find our needs met to cope with daily living with hope. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Thank you, Andrea. So we come to our final hymn. It's one that you will know well. Don't flick on to it yet, Ethan. I'm going to build. <laughs> it's one you know well. It's one that was nominated by several people, but none of them wanted to say anything. But the good thing is, it's one of my favourites as well. And as soon as I hear the words of this hymn, it takes me back to a couple of wonderful places. One is back to 2012, when I had the honour of going to New Zealand, when I was serving in the army. And when you, I arrived there, I had to go and be um, welcomed into the Marae, the spiritual home of the army, and became part of the tribe of Nyati Tomatawenga, the tribe of the god of the people of war. It's appropriate for the army. But it's New Zealand, they're not that wide <laughs> um, And one of the things you have to do is you have to give an account of yourself. Say where you're from, where you, your nearest mountain is and river. And then I realised that you also have to sing the song. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear Bob laughing because Bob is the only person who, and I say this regularly, I was singing and he turns to me one day and went, can you just be a bit quieter? You're putting me off. <laughs> and that, that was my reaction. It was, my goodness, what am I going to sing? And I looked at my fellow chaplain who was there, a Maori chaplain who was the RSM of the um, New Zealand SAS, who was still doing runs at the age of 73 and still serving. Um, I will never be able to do that at that age. And he smiled and I said, what about this hymn? And he smiled and said, yes. And between us, we managed to get through a couple of verses. But it takes you there. It's a hymn that takes you to special places and it was translated by Stuart Hine from the original Swedish material written by Carl Gustav Boberg. Again, it's a relatively new hymn that was published only in 1949. It's today recognised as one of the favourite hymns in the world. It is, O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder also know as how great thou art. So let's stand and sing our final hymn. <laughs>
Ireland, we've had a wonderful sing together. We've heard some amazing words. And I hope that you feel, <coughs> praise God, in the depths of your heart. I remind you that there are refreshments available once again downstairs after the service. Do consider others and think about social distancing if you're down there. But there are refreshments. I also remind you, for those that are here especially, that there's a retiring collection um, <coughs> just at the top of the line. And we'll give thanks for the gifts that are given for the work here at High Cross. <coughs> and finally, if you wish to join us for the church meeting, we'll be back in here at 12 o'clock. Do join us. So let's pray. God of love, help us to be loud, to speak your word, to spread your love, to be a voice for the voiceless. Help us to be quiet, to listen to you, to listen to those that most need to be heard. So be with us today. Help us to serve you better. And bless each one of us. And may the blessing of God Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with each one of us and all those that we love, this day and always. Amen. Amen. Now our worship is ended. May yes. our service be in. Take care. God bless. And thank you for joining us. And thank you for those who have joined us online.